Good morning. It's just coming up to 10 a.m. on Monday, the 9th of May, and I'm just out on my hybrid caribou. That's behind me. I'm heading out to a local place of interest, which I want to share with you. I've been wanting to do this for a couple of weeks now. I'm heading back out to Beacon Hill Woods. I'm parallel in the Fossway, which will have relevance later on. I'm heading down to Shepton Mallet and then I'm going to come back via an old favourite of mine, Beacon Hill Woods. It's a woodland set on a ridge above Shepton Mallet and it's where the Fossway crosses the Mendips at its highest point before it then starts dropping down to Oak Hill. I've been there a few times. I did a recce when I was preparing for the Fossway ride last year. The previous winter I'd gone out to recce it and somebody said to me afterwards there's amazing bluebell displays down there. When I rode the Fossway, I was hoping I might just catch them, but they'd gone over by then. But you could see the residue, and I just thought at the time, I think I said it on the Fossway video, I'm going to come back here next spring, which is what I'm doing today. It's a stunning display of bluebells by all accounts. I've been loving spring the last few rides. All the wild garlic, the fields of yellow rape, the smells, the bluebells, obviously, just the warmer days, the longer nights, the earlier mornings, you get the picture. That's the plan for the day. So it's about a 45 mile thin circuit actually down to Shepton Mallet. Back through Beacon Hill Woods. I'm going to cross another Roman road and I'll talk to you about that at the end because that's got relevance for an upcoming little trip. And also today I'm navigating on two Garmin's. So let's turn around and I'll show you what I mean. I've got my old Garmin Edge 200 there and my new Garmin Edge 300 there, and I'm navigating on them both. What I didn't mention on that 400 video a couple of days ago was that started playing up again. The, the black line, can you see it's very closely following the track. In fact, it's right on top of it today. The, the track of the route, the intended route. That's the intended route, and that's where I've been, and the cursor is where I am now. So you can see it's spot on. The other day, it's over to one side again, and I wasn't getting the turn prompts either. And I thought, oh no, I thought I'd solved that problem. I clearly haven't, and I think a possibility might be it just doesn't like routes over 200 miles. I know that sounds a bit crazy, but the only the twice it's happened is on the two 400 kilometer rides. I, I tried to think of all the differences. Is it because I'm importing them from a different site? No, because that's what I've done today. Anyway, so I'm using that as a backup today, even though I don't really need it because I would definitely need it on my next trip. Again, more about that at the end. I'm gonna navigate on both of those two and I'm taking ordnance survey maps. That's how tricky the navigation is going to be. And also when I do my June tour in East Anglia, I'll be taking that as a backup anyway. And again, if that plays up on route, I'm going to have to mount on the bars anyway, so I can quickly put it on. So I just want to see today how they work in tandem and what charging them on shorter sort of rides is going to be like. Is that going to be a problem or not? I'm just, just trying it out. But this is like a little circuit I do in the middle of the winter on January and February night set off, off from home about 6pm and just test my night navigation skills around here and you may sort of say well if you know the area that well you're going to override the Garmin but it's amazing when you don't have all the landmarks the distances are hard to gauge and you're not sure where the turns are coming from and I try and make it a bit of a complex route as well um, even with the Garmin Edge 200 even then, after the years of using that, I, st I still find that really useful exercise to do a couple of times in the winter. I mean, next winter is going to be even more interesting to see what happens with the new Edge 130. Anyway, you can see because I've stopped, the old Garmin Edge 200 just goes to an overview of the route. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. That's like a very thin circuit. This one stays on the detail of the route. Once I get moving, that one will. And you'll see that that pretty much replicates that. Hopefully, there's going to be a left-hand arrow coming up soon as we approach that T-junction. So you'll see what I mean. Hopefully, you can see them both on there. The tracks and the difference, slightly different scales. There you go, look, you've got the prompt on the newer Edge 130. The scales are slightly different. There you go, left hand T junction. I'm just taking this network of intricate lanes around the edge of Clandown without dropping down into it. 
come along there. Before GPS navigation on club runs, I would often navigate by memory. In fact, that's what I did. And I would quite often weave around here. And I remember a friend of mine, Rob, once said to me, he was leading. He would ask me to go to the front. He sort of said, you know that bit really well. I remember sort of saying to him, how I remember it is, you just basically follow the pylons, really. Whenever there's a choice, just sort of think, oh, what are the pylons doing? Like for that, for instance, that T-junction up there, you go left you sorry, rather you go right and then immediate left you're just basically replicating what the pylons are doing coming out of one valley into another i remember a few years later he said i'll, I'll never forget you telling me that it was so much help and funny enough it's just come kind of flooding back now even though it's not really relevant anymore because i navigate by gps these days probably need to get out the wind a little bit i tried something coming down from masbury summer i didn't film it and it didn't work actually I was watching Paul and Rebecca Whitewick's video about seven or eight months back. If you follow them, you'll know that they do similar to me, much better researchers than me, much better videos as well. And they were saying that one of Windsor Hill tunnels has been reopened to walkers. And I thought, well, I'm going down there. I could cut off three sides of the square by doing that and save myself a lot of climbing. And I turned along what used to be the Somerset and Dorset Railway. And I thought, great, it looks like I can get towards it. When I got to Hamwood Viaduct, it was gated and padlocked with barbed wire around it. There's no one's going to trespass. So however you get to tunnels, you have to do it via footpaths. What I did see coming down, well, I had to backtrack and go back to the, the three sides of the square that I was hoping to try and avoid. I saw there was a Crosscombe camping. I didn't even know there was a campsite there. That must be fairly new. I may well come out there, camp, leave my bike there and do some walking and explore the footpaths because I really want to investigate Windsor Hill Tunnel. That's for another time. Today I'm so looking forward to revisiting Beacon Hill anyway. It's just it's a place with so many fantastic memories. Oh, I did my first hot tent camp up there as well last December. As I take the bumpy section of the Fosway along there, it's rideable, a bit bumpy. It is probably designated as a footpath these days, although I haven't said that, it's a Roman road, so I, I will get off and push if people come along. But it's starting to see bluebells on either side. Going to be very careful. If I think I'm going to go into them at all, I will get off and push. Because they are actually a protected species. I think it's actually illegal to pick them. I could be wrong, but certainly damage them. them is. If not illegal, certainly sort of something I really, really don't want to do. I read somewhere recently that they don't reproduce through seeds. They reproduce, reproduce underground with their roots. I think people who know more about it than me may put me right on that. But it's why they take so long to get established. But, you know, the flip side of that is if you see lots of bluebells, they are representative of quite mature woodland or even ancient woodlands. But, yeah, it looks like... Um, almost like um, markers on either side. I'm hoping when I get under the canopy, it's, there's going to be a lot more of them. Oh my word, here we are approaching the summit of the Fosway through Beacon Hill Woods and look at these stunning bluebells. That's what I've come out to look at today. I was told they're spectacular. Oh gosh, absolutely amazing. Oh, there's a seat that I'm going to go and have my sandwich there. But as you come along the Fosway, it's rideable. It's fairly hard, tough soil um, in after dry weather it's rideable anyway. And either side, it's almost like a line sort of pointing you towards here. They've got lines either side of bluebells coming along. Gosh, they're absolutely spectacular. I came up here on my Fosway road last year. I was about a month too late for them, so I've been itching to come back and see this. What an amazing lunch stop that's going to be. I'm approaching the summit of Beacon Hill, looking back down at the bluebells. Anybody who knows the area, south of Shepton Mallet, the old Fosway followed the A37 as it went up over Pill Hill. And then it's rolled us straight at the bottom of that into the outskirts of Shepton Mallet. Then the modern road deviates around. And as it climbs up, the equivalent of what we're doing is over there a mile or so. And it uses an S-bend. In effect, it's um, taking the sting out of the 
the hill by using the edge of the contour. This is a typical Roman road. Literally, if there was a hill, you didn't go around it, you went straight up over it. I just cannot put in the words just how steep that is. And this is just one of many. Uh, after the summit here, you drop down to Oak Hill, then it's up and down, up and down like a roller coaster into Bath, comes into Holloway at Bath, follows the River Avon out to Bath Eastern, and even the modern Bannadine Road mimics the Foss Way and then joins it at the top, the old Foss Way, literally again goes straight up. I, I cannot put into words just how steep some of these hills are, and it's just mind boggling to think they were built just so Roman soldiers could march up up and over Dale to get to where they needed to get to as quickly as possible and then trade obviously followed that horse and carts had to navigate them how horse and carts got up or probably more importantly stopped going down it's just mind-boggling and riding my bike just really brought that home to me last year and what 11 months on it still just completely blows me away to be honest I've been coming across a lot of trees down actually, or partially down, and they seem to be just left for the time being. So you have to be very careful when you do get to ride that you don't, don't take the top of your head off. But to bring home the straightness of this, this big sort of pipe, it looks like some utility pipe, uh, just is running straight and every now and again as it dips up and down, you know, it becomes exposed like this. And you can see us heading over to a main road. I'm going to talk to you there about that main road, actually. I'm now at the highest point on the old Fossway at the summit of the Mendips in Beacon Hill Woods. And the Fossway crossed this sometimes busy modern road and went on down there towards Oak Hill. That's the way I'm going to go. I'm going to walk away from this road, actually, because it's, there's going to be a lot of road noise. I'll tell you about a little project coming up I've got planned try and get far enough away so that road noise doesn't interfere. So you can see the course of the Fossway, it's actually crossing this road, which is an old Roman road as well. This Roman road it crosses is known as Marguerite's 45B, also known as the Lead Road. Hopefully that will become apparent as I explain. It started at Old Sarum Ancient Castle on the outskirts of Salisbury, many miles that way. Most of it's off-road. There's bits of modern roads such as this and it went to Charter House up on the Mendips because it's believed there were Roman lead mines up there. And it's also conjectured, although experts don't agree on this by any means, that it possibly carried on down to a Roman port on the Bristol Channel. In fact, where the river Axe used to flow into the Bristol Channel before lot them, the land was reclaimed. My project is, I'm going to try and retrace that, I'm going to get the train to Salisbury sometime, hopefully next week or soon afterwards, dig my Roman outfit back out the wardrobe, wear that, and then try and retrace it as faithfully as possible. Even the experts can't agree exactly where it went, but I have got a few little tricks up my sleeve actually, I've got access to some research actually from experts. I'm not allowed to reproduce it because it's copyrighted, but I can certainly share it on some videos. as I use it to try and make my way and just retrace the journey from Old Sarum to the Bristol Channel as faithfully as possible. Anyway, onwards done that way.
Well, I've been following the Fosway back, and this is the section that comes down from Peasdown to Dunkerton, and it's just about to join the main road there. But I've just almost had a bit of a disaster coming down there. A, a, a stick just forced itself up through there and it's ripped the mud guard out of the um, stays and it's split the mud guard. It's about a month before I got on my holiday. The funny thing is, I've got a prop rivet gun at home. I'm pretty sure I can bend that back into shape actually. Um, and even then, the split on the mud guard, I can probably just put some tape around that. I'm pretty sure I can mend that. So I was riding down there, probably a bit foolhardy, but then, uh, hey, I look a bit of adventure. I nearly went over the handlebars because the front wheel just locked up solid. I was able to force the weight back down, and then, of course, I stalled and went sort of sideways, and I just about got my foot out and put it down before I did any damage. Anyway, homewards, joined the main road, a few hundred yards, turn right. Finished then, back at the bottom of Holloway. I've just come down that way. I'm going to be turning left to go that way along there back to my house. I turned via the Fosway on a little bit of damage. I had to do an emergency repair um, coming up the track from Dunkerton. Let me show you. Everything was just rattling and rubbing and I tried to bend all the stays back into place. You can see the tear in the mud guard there. So I just had to get a cable tie. I was dreading coming down the fast hill, Wells Way and Holloway into Bath and the whole thing folding up. So I've just done an emergency repair. On the next video, then you'll see me with one of three options on the front wheel. I'll, I'll either have been able to mend that and it'll be repaired, or there'll be no mud guard on, but I'll have ordered a new one, but it won't yet have arrived, or there'll be a brand new mud guard on. Anyway, I'm just going to cross under the subway bridge, head that way. I live about two miles that way, and I'm getting quite hungry actually, so I'm looking forward to getting home. As usual, thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.